Welcome to the Dead Unicorn, the tabletop role-playing game club. My name is Corey. Last week, I talked about the disarm rule in Legend of the Five Rings, the samurai fantasy role-playing game. And I got a lot of feedback, a lot of like good feedback from you guys, and I'd like to follow up on that. But first, I want to talk about what I see as another deficiency in the L5R rules. And that is complications. So again, this will go into some of the little crunchy bits of the rules. So if you want to know more, check out my series on how to play L5R. In the meantime, here's a terrible summary. Complications are supposed to be a way for a game master to key off a player's giddy or ninjo. So as you're playing the game, you're running the game as a game master, and you add something in, let's say for a character's history, and their giddy and ninjo come into conflict, or sometimes just something you want to add in as a game master, the players gain a few strife and then a void point which they can later spend on future checks to make them easier. Now this sounds all well and good until you put it into practice. In a pre-written adventure, much of the time you'll have to force these conflicts into being as a game master, either with some work before the game to try and figure out where you can actually piece these or put these in, or by using that wheel at the back of the book, which is one of the worst rules in the game. But what about when a game master runs his game like via improv week to week? Many of these adventures are keyed to, or they're all about a player's duty, their giddy and their ninjo, or a person's like character history. What becomes a complication then? Do they get a complication bonus like every scene because every scene is about that? Or do complications just suddenly disappear as if they are not an actual thing? Now all your players are out of some void point. So how do we square the circle and give them back the void point they might need to continue the game? Well, I've written a rule I like to call DOOM surrender to the rule of doom or suffer doom is an opportunity a pc can use on any check with any stance any approach all they have to do is spend a number of opportunities up to four one to four opportunities by doing this they gain a void point but the gm then adds a complication the degree of the complications challenge is lessened by the number of opportunities they spend. And if they're on void stance, it's lessened to one degree more. For example, if they spend, if a player spends one opportunity, they gain a void point, but something cataclysmic happens. Like maybe the main bad guy shows up for a round and just throws lightning bolts at the players and then gets on out of there. Or if they spend four opportunity, during the combat, they may slip and fall on a banana peel, or maybe even a clue that moves the plot forward. Depending on the degree, this may just be a minor inconvenience, or can even make your party retreat or fail. And it's all up to the players themselves. So why do this? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. First, it allows players to run out of void to gain that back, but they tempt fate by doing so. So there is a balance there. Second, it puts the players in control of the plot, or it gives the illusion that they are, because they're the ones triggering the complication. And it gives everyone a clear idea of what a complication is. Third, it gives a GM an excuse to add things to the plot that would otherwise feel forced, like the main villain showing up early, or a supernatural event occurring, or even a lost loved one showing up out of nowhere. People will question these additions less if they were triggered by the Doom mechanic. Fourth, L5R's Opportunities Rule is basically the yes and rule that many modern RPGs use that are taken from improv troops. But L5R doesn't have a yes but or no and mechanic. Doom adds that back in. Now there is a yes but and a no and when people use their opportunities 
for Doom. I've used it in my own game, and it has worked well, but it hasn't been used a lot yet, and I'm hoping that the players will take advantage of it more. Tell me what you think of the Doom rule in the comments. Will you be using it? Will you be modifying it? Do you think it's just unnecessary? I want to know. Before we leave, I want to talk about my last video on disarming and your comments, which helped me change, helped me refine the rule. First off, there's a correction. Uh, there is a ninjutsu that can disarm. It's a rank two ninjutsu and is many ways superior to Crimson Leaves Strike. Several of you said that the new disarm rule should be a rank one kata. It should be a trained ability. I disagree with this take and I'd like to explain why. Um, personally, I would love to see like a courtier or a shugenja that can slap an item out of a person's hand with their fan or a monk with that flimsy cane that can just pack and knock something out of someone's hand. Uh, if you have the martial arts skill, you should be able to disarm. It shouldn't be a kata that is only for bushy centric characters. So here's my new rule. And as you can see, it only costs two opportunities now. My thinking is that since critical strikes are only two opportunities, it doesn't make sense to spend more on that to do something that might be less useful than a critical strike. I mean, if you have to spend two opportunity for a critical strike and three opportunity for a disarm, that just seems wrong. <laughs> Next, I made the attack deal no damage. Instead of dealing damage, you disarm. Both techniques, the kata and the ninjutsu, both do damage while they disarm, and I thought this would be a great way for the technique to have a little more oomph. Also, I gave a penalty to the resist check if the attacker has a snaring weapon, which gives better odds of actually pulling off a disarm if they're equipped for it. Lastly, I made the opportunity to be only used on air stance. I chose air because it's kind of a defensive stance and not necessarily wanting to do damage while they disarm, but also because of the two techniques, Crimson Leaf Strike and What's Yours Is Mine, uses earth and fire stance respectively. This means the more techniques you have, the more options you have, the more stances you are able to perform a disarm on. Thank you to everybody who commented. Thank you for everybody who will comment on this video. You guys are really helpful. You help me kind of um, take apart a rule and see it in a different light. And I am so grateful for that. Until next time, go roll some dice.